I'm Patty with Studio 12 Stencils, and today we are going to paint with fire. Okay, so first thing we wanna do is prep our board. These are um, rounds, they're 18 inch rounds that came from Home Depot, and they are super affordable as of 2023. You know, if you're seeing this at a later date, I have no control over that, but um, they are great for making Lazy Susans or trays or round door hangers. Um, just, they're such a creative surface. So we're gonna take advantage of the grain. So when you are, I ordered four of these so that I would have, you know, just a variety. And when you're doing that, you wanna choose the one that has the most pleasing grain to you because that is what the flaming is going to do is it is going to intensify the color of the grain so then when we paint over it, the grain will still show. It's such a cool technique. Um, it's actually called shishugiban and that is an ancient Japanese um, wood tempering technique. They use fire of the fire on the wood to make the wood waterproof, which is so amazing. But that is what we're doing today. And so let's talk about prep. The one thing that you do want to do is pay attention. If you hear on these end grains, this is always a really hard area to prep. So you want to give it a little initial sanding. Take one of your little um, sandpaper um, ends and then just cup it around the edge. And then you feel it and make sure you got it done. And I want more, so I'm gonna do sanding is my cardio today. And when you get that smooth, you'll step down to a lighter grit. I've got a little foamy, spongy thing. And you'll step it down, and then you can hear the difference that that makes. So we'll go all the way around and get it nice and sanded. If your board is rough on top, then you'll sand as well, but make sure always, always um, to sand with your grain. The grain is the direction of the lines of the board. If you sand cross grain and you create a new texture, everything that you do on top of it is gonna pick up that texture. So always with the grain, always, unless there's a reason not to. Um, also, if you're using an orbital sander and you're just using a stain, with orbital sanding, sometimes it'll show little crazy um, round jiggly marks all over your board. So if you don't want that look, use manual sanding. When we're painting with fire, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use one of these um, Benzomatic flame thrower things. This is a fire starter. I use it in my home fire pit. And then we're gonna do some safety. We're gonna make sure we have some gloves that aren't synthetic. And so that's leather have you a fire extinguisher right here. And you also wanna have some safety goggles. I've got the ones that fit over glasses so that you can still see if you wear glasses. I didn't know these things existed. Um, but you wanna have that in case you hit any pitch or anything like that and it throws like a spark at your eyes or something. You just always wanna be safe. One of the things that I found really helpful was a piece of board that is like a, just an old slab so you're not hurting whatever you're burning on top of, just in case. And then also, um, I found this metal easel. Anything you could prop up your wood with um, some boards or something that you have laying around. I just happen to have a metal easel, so I'm using that. So whatever works for um, your garage or wherever. And I also do recommend doing this out in a garage or someplace that you don't have, you know, you don't worry about the burning and the fire and all of that kind of stuff. All right, so we're gonna put our glasses on. I'm gonna wear my gloves when I flip the board over. Okay, I just wanna say, how magic is that? <laughs> you can do it on a really high heat if you want to. I recommend doing it lower and go slower. And then you need to know that the longer you stay on an area, the darker it's gonna get. So if you want a light burn, then you're gonna move quicker and go across faster. If you want a deep dark burn, then you'll leave it there until you like the color but you can't go back and correct it very easily. So you wanna kind of think about what you want and um, you could plane it or sand it down and then start over again. So your all is not lost if you don't like what you did. So now we'll take our gloves 
Um, ideally, if you were going to be touching this and you were going to have your hands near it, that's when you put the gloves on as well. But um, this is it, because you're holding this here, it doesn't um, have the same danger rating. Flip him over. All right, guys, look at how amazing that is. We're gonna let this cool down, and then I'm gonna show you the um, staining. We're gonna stain it to seal it. I'm gonna go ahead, I had some released um, pitches come up in here, so I'm gonna take my sanding block and just sand those back just a little bit. And I can go straight over any of the burn. Get your glasses on. If at this point you didn't like how much it released the color, you could go backwards and go burn it a little bit more again. So these are my fancy gloves, they're tr uh, plastic bags. I've stirred up my stain and I'm choosing the browner color one. And then I'm just going to apply a nice even coat. And this is super satisfying. Go around your edges. If you wanted to use the back side of your board as a different season or something like that, you would burn it at the same time as you burn the other and then apply your stains at the same time. Um, it's always a good idea to seal the back sides of your boards. All right, guys. So you don't want to you don't want to dispose of this by just putting it into dry trash. Um, what you do is you take a baggie, a Ziploc baggie, fill it with some cold water, and put your discards in that. Zip it shut, and then discard it. And I would always discard in my outside trash as well.